you know, we I've said this a hundred times, this dude, Will Smith's worth five hundred million dollars, and he's in an infinity pool, filling it with tears because this woman is in love with the ghost of Tupac. Right. So you. By the way, as if Tupac wouldn't have ate her up and spit her out. Oh, and oh absolutely. Her, by the I way. mean, yeah, because he was like Tupac was going to put up with her shit. Like, yo, what's up, y'all? What's up, Square Pimp Again? On this episode is a listener mail and just the family. Um, we'll talk about Will Smith, Michael B. Jordan, Corny. I don't know. Maybe uh, talk about me getting stabbed, fighting in front of white people. And where does insecurity come from? Um, what does being a man mean and how to get there? This is a goodie. Um, yo. Yeah, a lot of pop culture in this one, man. A lot of pop culture. Yeah. Uh, if if you love the show and love all the technique and uh, dating and relationship advice, please go over to patreon.com slash manschool202 and subscribe and support us. It helps keep the show going. Uh, it, and that's where we do all the bonus content, all the listener mail. Uh, this week you can go to... Um, patreon and we do our uh, bonus episode where we talk about uh the friend zone we get real deep into the friend zone remain reframing how you see value in yourself and how selfish women are actually doing you a favor that's over at patreon.com slash manschool202 also if you want any relationship consultations you could email me at advice from harry at gmail.com and for dante you could go to dante nero.com and click on consult i'm not an alpha male I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, what's up, Square Pimp Brigade? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Um, This is going to be a good, good show. This is going to be just the family. That's right. Just me and you, um, bud. Just me and you, but that's not from. That doesn't mean there's a lack of things to talk about. No, uh, no, we don't really need a guest this week. There's been a lot going down. Yeah, man. And, and what do you call it? The manosphere. What are we supposed to do? This guy, uh, bitch ass yeah. news. I don't know what this. What are we? <laughs> the bitch ass news report. Bitch infusion. <laughs> the uh, um, lot going on. Lot going on. Go you. The you, corny you, report. There's a couple of things going on the last couple of weeks with the some, ball uh, report. What the is ball. it? The- <laughs> The corny, the corny, uh, no balls report. We don't listen. So, couple things going on, right? There's a lot in the news. One was obviously this weekend was the uh, Chris Rock thing, right. right? The Chris Rock special. He did this special on Netflix. Uh, I think it was a genius business move overall. The first live special ever done on Netflix. The first live stream that Netflix has ever done mm-hmm. of a stand-up show that he did in Baltimore. And he finally Baltimore, Baltimore, Baltimore. How them crab cakes? <clears throat> finally, he uh, talked about the Will Smith, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith thing, and he, I don't think in my from my end he did not disappoint. He hit it hard. Uh, the the, I mean, he really laid into them, and I think overall it was a genius move on his part to keep his mouth shut for yeah. a year and market it. A year. He turned down so many interviews. And look, in, in one end, he probably could have increased his touring business a little yeah. bit by just doing one. But it is a genius move. And then to do it with the first live special. Now, that's also why it was interesting because he did stumble a little bit, right? When he did those, the the Will Smith, the jokes. Yeah, he, he did. Yeah, but it wasn't, you know, it, it there was there's a humanity in that, too. Yeah, but I think part of it was he did not go over that material anywhere yeah. else. I think that was the first time any live audience was hearing that material because he did not want. That's why the special wasn't taped because it would have gotten out, and right. it was everybody was waiting, and he delivered something. And I I like what he had said in the special. He talked about uh, you saw it, correct, Dante? Yeah, I saw it. And uh, in the special, he he said that you know uh, that it was a bitch ass move, basically. He talked about how uh, everybody, and he goes, first of all, I wouldn't normally talk about this, but you guys brought it up on the internet to begin with, which is fucking strange. Like why right. you would discuss, interview, why you would be interviewing each other about cheating on each other. He right. goes, everybody in the world called him a bitch. Everybody listed all the people that called yeah. him a bitch. He did it for like a minute straight, which was very funny. Yeah. And then he goes, he turns around and he punches me. And... Uh, and he talks about all this stuff about how he didn't start any of this shit, right? Like yeah. that it was Jada Pickett Smith. Is it? It's Pickett, right? Or Pinkett? Pinkett. 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 Jada Pinkett Smith. 
uh, started this all the way back to when he hosted the Oscars, apparently, and he would not uh, boycott the Oscars because Will Smith wasn't nominated for concussion, which was her right. request. Right. That yeah, you know, she was upset about that. Just basically calling Will Smith through comedy, very funny. I'm not doing it justice. You should watch it. I mean, there's plenty. Of, you've probably all seen it. It's all over the place. Mm-hmm. He laid into Will Smith, and it's fucking embar. It's just more embarrassment for Will Smith because I mean, he does point out everybody talked about it. He flat out says this woman was fucking her son's best friend. Mm-hmm. That's what was going on, and you know, it's a bitch ass move. And then punching him is a bitch ass move. Yeah, and I can't say I disagree. I think it's all. Well, he he said he said you know I he paid he played Muhammad Ali. Oh, Will I Smith played, did. Yeah, po- he goes. I played Pookie, from, a crackhead from New Jack City. He said even in animation, I play a donkey, and he plays a shark. Right. Right. So yeah. he's just bigger. Will Smith is bigger, <laughs> twice his size, and he pun- and he and it was a bitch move to punch uh, out of everybody talking shit. He found the smallest, scrawniest guy that he could take in a fight, which is yeah. a bitch move. Yeah, let's. I, I mean, you know that that look. You could you could practice for 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 Muhammad Ali and everything else, but yo, give in a real fight is a it takes a different a different kind of different kind of energy, different kind of you got to be a different kind of money unless you pick somebody who you know you you have no fear of in the first place. What's what's interesting is this. You know, we I've said this a hundred times. This dude, Will Smith, worth five hundred million dollars, and he's in an infinity pool, filling it with tears because this woman is in love with the ghost of Tupac. Right. So you, by the way, as if Tupac wouldn't have ate her up and spit her out oh, and been oh, done absolutely. with her. By the I way, mean, yeah, because he was like Tupac was going to put up with her shit. Like Tupac was going. Well, you know what? It's it's a weird thing because women women try. They try them. Look, they try everybody, but the motherfuckers who allow it are the ones that they keep. You know, they'll just keep dissing him if he if he's weakness. If he shows weakness, then she'll. And I and I believe that there's less. There, I believe there's something instinctual about that. That if I, you I don't follow in what sense, but well, you can't. A woman doesn't want a guy who she can walk all over. Um, she doesn't find it attractive that a man can't exert some dominance over her because it's, it's I, I believe that that's built into the that's built into the, the, the genetics of human beings. I mean, yeah. we haven't talked about this a long time. I mean, it was a going back to I, caveman days. Right. We, we, we the great book is Sex at Dawn um, by the great uh, Dr. Christopher Ryan, who we've had on the Ryan show, had on the show. Um, but we're talking about there are instinctuals, you know, as human beings, we are. We are mammals. We are animals. Yeah. We are primates. We are and, animals. We are animals. Yeah. And and uh, and our instinctual drive is to keep the species going, to keep the species and alive. Instinct, and that instinct is two hundred thousand years old. So we're literally talking about the differences in men and women is ex- instinctually in place through hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. Sure, we have also evolved into this cognitive nature where we can make choices to not give way to our more animalistic, our, you know, some people say the lizard in us, you know, this this kind of um, kill or be killed, predator and prey. We, we have a cognitive brain where we can move on from that, but that doesn't mean that that doesn't exist. Um, it's still you know, there. It's and also it's like our, our it's weird because it's almost like technology so present around us. We we just think we're more evolved than we really are. That instinct supersedes everything else. Yeah. yeah, nature doesn't give a shit about your podcast. It doesn't give a shit about uh, you know, how many followers you have or how much money you make in the bank or whatever. All it gives a shit about is keeping the species alive. That's within the DNA. It doesn't DNA. care about your pronouns either. It doesn't care and, about any of it. And I'm not funky about that. I get the social construct and I'm not against that at all. But there, are, there is an instinctual direct situation based on 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 um, on the uh, this, the preservation of the species. Immortality, I would even go one further. 
immortality is, you know, I'm not religious, I'm an atheist, but the immortality is not the heaven, these so-called heaven in the clouds, mm. but it is moving your DNA to the next generation. Because the same genetic material that's in your daughter and in your son is the same genetic material that's in you. And that is what the what the immortality is, is moving that moving that that um, DNA to the next generation and so on and so forth. My son today is part my great grandfather. You know, they, we can literally trace the genetic yeah. code. That's that's back that's to something my great, instilled great into him. Yeah. So you 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 know, this is scientific. Now, when we talk about these social constructs, we talk about, you know, we talk about uh, gender and sex being fluid. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a biologist, and so I'm really going to wait. To, to, to pass judgment on it until the experts have kind of worked this out. And I think they're moving it closer and closer, but we are still talking about women, heterosexual women that or women who are having babies and are attracted to men are attracted to men that are more dominance that exhibit a level of strength, control, control over their environment and aggression that women find it attractive. And the reason they find it attractive is because it's there's an instinctual need for protection. For protection. For protection. Now, the definitions of what protection is are different now because it's not just physically protecting you, although women tend to like that. Right. But it is also financial protection, emotional protection. There's a lot of different ways you can support and protect your woman. Right. And there and those things are attractive first and foremost. So it's not just like the biggest meathead yeah. that uh, anymore. Although the meathead does women an find a meathead there. attractive. I mean, I but mean, I it's not going to be more attractive than a meathead who is also like smart or a meathead who also is sensitive. So, uh, you know, like a Dave Batista is like uh, a quote unquote meathead who is a really you can tell he's like smart guy, intellect or, or a guy who's uh, who can have a conversation, who's very sensitive, who's smart, who's interesting. That's the ultimate level of attraction because it, it combines all those things. So it's not just the meatheadness. It's not just well, working out. I mean, it's just funny. It's like the, the time I had that girl stab me. What? Uh, twice. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I got stabbed by a dude the first time. The oh, second I'm time. sorry. I thought it was the same no, woman. No. I apologize to that woman. Uh, I'm did, sorry that I, I slandered your name by saying you yeah, stabbed him twice. Stabbed me once. You only but stabbed him once. The stabbing actually came from... A little experimentation. I don't, did we ever talk about this? I don't know if we did. On air? Yeah. I don't know. Did we ever talk about it off air? Well, I don't know what the expert. I okay. remember okay. the stabbing so story. I was doing the, this experimentation where, uh, so women, there were women that find you, there were certain cues and subtexts, instinctual subtexts that women find attractive. <laughs> which is that physical aggression, that protection on a physical level, right? And then mm. there is this intellectual level where that other, that other level of attraction that happens on, uh, on a level of being intelligent, being able to- On a to subconscious give, level? On a subconscious level, but intellectual, on an intellectual, on a social, you know, based on the social dynamics and your ability to- to run circles around somebody who is less intelligent than you is also very attractive. Like you, you know, like, you, you know, C C Christopher Hitchens and Dawkins and these guys. I mean, let, let's be honest. What you call it? Uh, cheating on his wife. What's the dude? Uh, Stephen Hawkins. Stephen Hawkins, who is a pile of bones and flesh in a wheelchair. He he his chick married him and 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 and. You know that we're not talking about any level of physical, physical attraction at all because he can't he can't keep her safe. But he attracted women because he was a brilliant mind. He didn't even have. I mean, he couldn't even talk. Just uh, why don't you come sit on my face? You know. Yeah. So, and this Jeez. guy cheated on his wife with another chick. And so, at the time, I was experimenting with both attractions. I was working out like a beast. 
I was aggressive. I was doing martial arts. I was so I had that physical attraction. I always looked nice. You know, my gear was together. I smelled good. But then there was this intellectual kind of thing. This kind of quiet control that I had. Kind of this, this, this. People say alpha. I say sigma. This kind of quiet power. And this woman stabbed me, like with the the fear of losing me made her stab me because I don't think that she was, um, don't get me wrong. She was out of her fucking mind, but, um, literally could not deal with the attraction hitting her on both, on both fronts simultaneously, just crazy. Like, if you were with just her responses to me was insane. I mean, I even how you say would go, you, you, you know, say something crazy. I would throw her out of my house. Mm, she would yeah. Go get a sandwich and come back and act like nothing we didn't have happened. an argument. Yeah. Like just nothing happened. Come. Hey, hi, baby. Got you a sandwich. And I'd be like, I just threw you out of my house. Oh, you, you, are, you are silly. <laughs> I was like, we just, we just were yelling and screaming. She, yo, I tell you, get the fuck. <laughs> oh, you shit's crazy. Um, but that was the thing that got me stabbed. It was the me kind of focusing both. Sort of like, you know, if you got two magnifying glasses and you're lining up the beams together, right? It was oh, just it's double like, the beam power. You're saying yeah, it was it, too much for her. Yeah, I, just the irrational thinking on her part was amazing how quickly she freaked out and how 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 detrimental it was to me i was just literally and don't get me wrong was was absolutely sorry about it afterwards when she came down but you know so it's a it's a weird thing that to 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 the aspect of this instinctual stuff and this other stuff and there's constantly people trying to say that this ain't so that we're these cognitive people but this is again um uh you know this is again a situation you know where you you're you're looking at this um in a way where it it's it just it it you can't people try to deny that these things don't exist the same way they tried to put women in a box about where they are what gender is um, you know, what what women what they're have shaken of. off and yeah. you know, where the feminist movement and the um uh you know what we hold on one second, Jesus. Hold on. Sorry, huh? Hmm. Yeah. Um so like dealing with this in a way where 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 it, it's the same idea of treating women as if they're one dimensional beings is the same thing they're trying to do uh, to, to not say that women have these characteristics is the same. I think it does them in injustice. The, um, I would have an, I, I wouldn't have a problem uh, debating somebody on this, but I mean, let's, but you can't even say these things. You can't even say that there are these generalizations of women when in order to have a discussion, a debate, Nobody is talking about everybody. Nobody is. There are always anecdotal situations. There is always a generalization over for us to understand the larger group. There's um, also but, always an exception to the rule, but that's not the that's the exception. Not the rule. Not the I mean, rule. we we were last show we looked up and said eighty five percent, eighty five percent of human beings on in the U S. Uh, say that they're heterosexual. What that means, what the parameters of that, I don't know. But this is, it, it must mean something if 85% of the people um, are, are saying that. So, I mean, I, I think we, so when you're looking at this, uh, this Will Smith thing and, and what Chris Rock is talking about is, uh, you know, here was a safe situation to beat up somebody who he didn't know there was no consequence. And to go and to say to his wife, look at me, you see, I can protect you. I, you see, I'm not a pussy. And the simple fact that you're 
proving to somebody that you're not a pussy is where the problem starts. The fact that somebody even makes you think like you are a pussy is where the the debate starts and ends. You feel me? Yeah. Well, the fact that you have to prove that, that you have to, it's it's a very bizarre conversation to have because also it's a, it's a, com, it's a complex conversation about what is manliness and, and whether or not if you can't physically dominate somebody, does that mean you can't protect somebody you're with? Yeah. And that's not necessarily the case. Protecting no. them is protecting them to the best of your ability. Um, yeah. And in the confines, yeah, when, when you're in a situation where you have to prove, when you find yourself that you have to prove to your woman, to your lady, that you can protect her or that you're not a pussy, that's a bad situation to yeah. be in. It's already a bad situation. It's a bad situation to be in. Because Will Smith is also, the strange thing about Will Smith is, he is a big dude. He's not a small guy. No, no, no. And he could protect her. But he chose to protect her in the worst situation possible in which there's a guy literally who's who he can take in a fight for sure. Yeah. And that's that's that makes that in a way, ironically, that does make him a pussy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which I don't I didn't care for it. I don't like it. It's just like there's no you know, when you can take somebody in a fight, that's not that's not manliness. We we also used to say, you know, if you you beat up, a, a you know, a little dude or whatever, right? We also go, hey, uh, you know, you don't get no points for that. You don't get no points for beating up a dude that's already scared of you. Um, you know, you don't get points for for beating up somebody who's who's clearly not a, a specimen. You don't get points for none of that. So to do what he did is just really it, it made him look worse but i mean this is also you well you know we were talking about we, we you know you and i have talked about this before we talked about um you know um the fact that he um I'm, I'm losing my place the fact that he's chosen to pick these lanes right the fact that he's in a situation with somebody who didn't want him in the first place like from what i understand she didn't even want to marry him in the first place like she was like let's just let's just um let it flow let's see you know like she wasn't like marry me um i want the ring i want like this and then i've said how many times have you heard me say over and over and over again how um you know people never you should never be asking somebody to be your girlfriend yeah. When you're with her and you start and she's like, hey, look, I don't know. What are we doing here? Like, what do we call this? And she's hinting at the fact that she wants a commitment. Even if you want the commitment, you you wait until she's ready to make the commitment, because if you don't, um, then you're pushing. Then what you're doing is giving off. You're giving off pathetic desperation. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because and, when, a, when a woman wants uh, when a woman wants something she'll let you know they're not yeah. shy about letting you know no. when they want something yeah they never have been when it when has there ever been a situation where they have been it just does it doesn't exist they will tell you in some form or another and or usually directly that they want more you they want when you're not in that situation you're asking for it it's a, it's trouble as a man when you're yeah. asking hey what are we doing what that means she's not and it's ironic because it, there's a lot of games to play, but the, the irony is the more you ask, the less they want that. It's a very strange, especially yeah. if it's your idea to bring it up. Yeah. yeah. It's human nature to just want something that you can't have, which is fucked up, but that's just part of human nature. And it's uh, definitely prevalent in relationships. I I literally was looking at, um, I got addicted to these videos where uh, the um, <laughs> where the guy would go, um, the guy says, hey, yo, can I holler at you, whatever. And then she goes, no, no, I don't want no part. And then he walks up and he gets in a Lamborghini. The girl comes running back and then she jumps in his car. Well, the conversations there, well, yo, I, you should take me shopping. You want to be with a bad bitch. You got to be with a bad, like the, the arrogance of what these women are asking for simply because of their attractiveness, because they know that they can get it. They know that guys will pay for it but it's almost not their fault 
because it's well, a, sure. it's a thing that guys allow. You know, I talk about it all the time. The uh, the Super Bowl, the owners box in the Super Bowl. When you're watching yeah. the Super Bowl, who do you see in the owners box? They cut to the owners box. Here's what you got to do to get in that box. You either got to be the owner of the team. Mm-hmm. You got to be a, a former, you know, quarterback of the team, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer, world Hall record Famer, breaker, world breaker, two of your own championships, whatever. Or you just got to be a hot chick, a hot right? Chick. You got to be a hot chick. That's how you gain access to that exclusive thing. And the problem is that as men and as a society, we've always given that, we've always given that off. We've allowed them to have that. Because we give them access with the hope dudes, corny dudes who happen to have money or happen to have something else, give them access because they're hoping to get laid. But we also a lot of times don't give them access to marriage. Like we'll give them access to the hookup. We'll give them access sure. to the. But it's like if you if you for the streets, guys, you know. Guys with a with a future and businesses and you know high value men, they uh well you know, well they, some do but some some guys do give them access to that because they want a trophy wife or they want to show off and it, you know it, it's like a it's a it, it's almost like they look at it like it's a a property or commodity. Sure, somewhat. it is a commodity, but it's a, it's a car, it's another car, it's another right. Bugatti. Yeah. In there, in there, As you know, the great Andrew Tate would say, but it's it's but understand this it is a Bugatti, not the Bugatti, it is one of the many car collections. And there's a trade off with that because that guy who has options is going to exercise his options. And so, if you're looking for this, this romantic, I found my my true love. Now we're going to that ain't happening either. The other thing is, how often is it a situation where the, our value, our, our value to provide is directly related to our brow, uh, to our manhood? You are not a considered a man. You are not considered a viable entity if you can, if you have not achieve some level of success, some level of proficiency in your own life, can stand on your two feet and be able to stand on your feet, two feet where somebody can stand on your shoulders. You being a man whose children is hungry, whose wife is unhappy, doesn't make you a man. It lessens your ability to be a man. And that is a constraint that we put on ourselves, that men put on ourselves. The interesting thing is how quickly you get feminists, which will, who will say, oh, men ain't shit, men ain't this, men ain't. But this is a, this is a standard that we put on ourselves, that men put on ourselves. I've always said this over and over again. You know, we talk about uh, Tiger Woods paying millions of dollars in child support, Dr. Dre splitting, getting half, giving his wife half. She did not mix one beat, right? But we, we often talk about that. But the one guy that won the game was Kevin Federline, Britney Spears. That's right. Uh, baby's right. father or husband. I don't know if it was a husband, whatever. But he kept the kids. His job became he became a stay home dad. He got he got uh, alimony and and child support from her. And the, and he went from dancer to fat dad. Right. He was took it taking care of the kids, which is interesting because how come men don't idolize Kevin Federline? Nobody's. Walking around with Kevin Federline T-shirts going, going, uh, yo, he won the game. Finally, one of us wins the game. And we don't we don't admire him. In fact, as much as men argue and fight about how it, it the system is unfair, we disrespect somebody who wins the game. If you're you know, you can hear people talking about Wendy Williams. Um, Wendy Williams is um uh, father, I mean, not father, her, her, her husband. ex-husband. Yeah, he's he's suing her for alimony, and he's gonna get it. But this this is also what equality looks like, too. You know, like you, you know, be careful what you wish for. You know, if you if something goes down, if 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 their war breaks out, equality means that traditionally, where you could stay home with the kids and be safe, now you gotta go out and fight. And not just, not just, 
you know, pack, you know, mix, cook the chow or clean it. You, you get on you, the front, on the battle lines, on yeah, the front dog, lines. I mean, yeah. I, I'd be interested to see the, the numbers of how many men have died in wars in the, in the history of, you know, of our civilization, just endless men. Um, and I'm not a, an, I don't have a problem with it the way it is. The problem is the fact that there's this all of a sudden there's this this um, this need for um, equality only in, this selective equality. Sure. So when it's beneficial, yeah, equality yeah. when it's beneficial. But, but you look at you you look at Will and and this is what like here's a guy who we by all intents and purposes we would say he's winning, and. In the in the in the in the context of his his misery, beat up a guy who's smaller than him, um, less physical. Yeah, yeah, like what's crazy is he didn't even get points for that. Like everybody called him a bitch, and Chris said that. Yeah, but you know, let me ask you this: Do you, in hindsight, you know, after a year of this? Do you has your opinion changed on Chris Rock? What he did that night is he would he be considered a bitch for not fighting back? Because he gave his reason at the end of the special for not fighting back, which is you know he he goes you don't fight in front of white people. He didn't want to fight in front of white people, which is First a comedic all, joke, but you know yeah yeah well well he also dropped the mic after that like you know I'm dropping this is profound it's not look. Um, Will hit Chris because he knew Chris was hittable. You know what I mean? Let, let's make no mistake about it. He picked his victim purposefully. It had no, not and no shape or form that Will pick Chris to smack in the face because uh, Chris grew up with parents and you don't fight in front of white people. First of all, I don't care about fighting with white people. This is a there's there's a there's a thing that has been so except I mean there's two parts that I look at this. One is the racial part of it. The other part of it is masculinity part of it. Um black people need to stop looking for the approval of the white people so that white people say you're okay. So all of a sudden, if they get into a fight on air, whatever, whatever, it, look, I'm not taking responsibility for the fact that will smacked Chris on the, on the, on the Grammys or whatever on the Oscars. I also am not taking responsibility for the fact that Chris let it happen. What his response to this is his response. He gets to have whatever response. Don't let's stop trying to make it look like he he had so much control. And if Chris didn't have control, what was he going to do? If you're saying this guy's twice your size, bigger than you, stronger than you. So now all of a sudden, if you decide, hey, I'm not going to have this bullshit. Right. W what is his recourse? Or was he Hulk out? You know, you know, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry and then he hulks out. And then, no, in any situation, Chris is getting that ass kicked in this situation. If he gets smacked, he's going to get that's what's going to happen. He's going to get smacked because he's a dude who is not he's not a fighter, which is fine. That's what makes Will the pussy. But stop trying to act like I did this as a conscious thought about the because I'm mature and I if it was Tony Rock they'd have been scrapping that's what would have happened mm. and let's be honest what if what if Chris would have took the smack and then if Will was going back he he drop kick Will in the back of in in his center of his back and kicked him <laughs> off the stage what 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 would have been let me ask you this you tell me what would have been the narrative what would you have thought about that if he kicked him while he kicked him in the back, so, so that would be a bitch. No, move. I'm saying Will comes up, smacks him, mm -hmm. turns around, puts his hand on his belt, like he, you know, and walks away. Mm, mm, mm. All of a sudden, he gets to the end of the stage, and Chris drop kicks him 
off the edge of the stage in the center of his I back. like that you're picking the drop kick <laughs> out of all the maneuvers you could use. The drop kick is fucking. I mean, I don't like to see sweet chin music. But, that would be great. But I I'm think not... it would have been better if if Will if Will and Chris shook hands and then while they're shaking hands. Chris he Rock, uh, he, he gives him the super kick and throws him through the barbershop window, <laughs> a la Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Um, I yeah, I guess I would have been fine with that. It would be good for him. Good for him whipping that dude's ass. And what, you know. would you, what would your response, what would the response have been from the masses? I think it would have been fine that he deserved it. I think it would have been fine. Yeah, right. I agree. And not only that, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of fucking street cred would that have given <laughs> <laughs> Chris Rock, you, yeah, I guess so. Would, the joke would have been like, "Oh, we thought Chris was a pussy till he drop mm. kicked Will Smith off the edge of the." <laughs> like, you, you, I mean, you, let's let's think about the scenario. Yeah. Some him doing something so out of character. Well, um, yeah. W- when Will was as disrespectful as he was, he'd have been fine either either way. Yeah. He would have been fine either way. I do recall there was a moment where he was going to say something, and then he stopped. I do know that moment that he yeah yeah like, wait wait yeah. he was like you know what forget it because yeah. which I do think is the right move to a degree. But you know, listen. At the end of the day, he made the right call because after a year of that, he is back on like his name is back up there. He's made history. I mean, that's a doing a, a live thing for Netflix is a massive thing. And for you know what the I just looked at the contract. You know what the contract is? No, what's the contract? Forty million, two specials, twenty million each. Jesus Christ, that's fucking absurd. I mean, good for him, but it's just crazy money. And that was one of the things. Those numbers are going to be big. So he did the smart thing overall, business wise. And let's be honest, you think he he could have still got the streaming? He could <laughs> probably, but uh, definitely. Definitely, at the end of the day, it was all a win for Chris Rock, regardless. This and it because it was just been... like shit for Will and, and Jada, who now thought that like after a year it was done, and now it's just it just it, hits him in the, yeah. it just hit him again. Oscar season is back, uh, you know, it's and and deservedly so. Uh, yeah, and you know, it's atrocious. The behavior is atrocious on both ends. Yeah. But uh, moving on from that, the other big story this week in the whatever you want to call the manosphere, in the, the manosphere. question of manliness, another uh, actor who probably could whip, uh, whip uh, I think, could whip Will Smith's ass uh, is Michael B. Jordan, the right. fantastic uh, actor, star of Creed three uh, yeah. the, from the Rock, the Rocky spinoff. Yeah. And uh, he was recently at a premiere for Creed 3, where a interviewer came up, an interview uh, interviewer named L'Oreal, came up to Michael B. Jordan and was very... Now, that, mind you, Lord, we interviewed L'Oreal. We did. She was on the show with Angela Yee, episode 223. Yes, big-ass uh, back- titties. Uh, oh, now I remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, big ass, know. big ass, yeah, big ass, light skin titties. Lot. I mean, it was. I'm, you know, I'm looking at the pictures. Everybody involved, Angela E looks great. I mean, I know Angela Yee. Oh, you uh, have the pictures with us. With I don't know if I have the pictures with us. Did we take pictures? We must have. Yeah, we took pictures somehow. All right. Well, maybe, maybe you took pictures and they were never released because they're not popping up. Mm-hmm. But um, aside, anyway, she was doing an interview on the red carpet with uh, Michael. Jordan walks by and uh, you know she's all chummy chummy with him and he is like oh I thought you thought I was corny and uh, sure enough in a past interview on a podcast she did mention she went to she happened to go to high school with Michael B. Jordan and she Mm -hmm. talked about how he was uh, she said he was corny yeah. Uh, now she did say like corny guys are better guys to a degree but she continued to kind of make fun of him because they went to high school in Newark, so he had his eight by tens or whatever, and everyone's fucking made fun of him. Right. Um, and now, and then Michael B. Jordan. So you know, you cut to twenty twenty three. Michael B. Jordan goes, "Yeah, I thought you said I was corny." You know, he's throwing shade to her. Right. And you know, he walks away from the interview eventually. Yeah. Now, um, is he is is he corny? Is he justified? You know, is he is it? sour grapes is it bitterness or is he justified in giving her like her just desserts like calling her out yeah yeah well so here's the first thing um 
you, first of all, you, 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 how old, what are we talking, 12 years old? Uh, one of the reasons why Michael B. Jordan is probably famous was because he had his headshots at 12 years old. Do you know what I mean? So uh, the, that's the kind of, you know, for them, to, you know, when you look at a guy like him and you go, hey, yeah, uh, he just popped out of nowhere when you realize that he had been he had been pushing this acting thing since he was a kid, since he was a kid. And his success is, let, let, okay, so uh, do we know how old he is? How old, let me see. Michael B. Jordan is, yeah. let's see here, he's a younger fella. Uh, either that or we're older and we still think he's a young guy. He might be in his 30s. Uh, yeah. Michael B. Jordan, I'm looking him up right now. Um, he is 36, so he's, he's not so, really, yeah. he's young so, to us, but. He's 40 years old. He's a 40 year old man. Okay, right? but I'll say this. I'll say the interview did happen more recently within the last couple of years. Right, but he, he, so uh, let me see. I, I'd love to see um, uh, IMTB. This is relevant because, um, okay, I'm looking at his IMDb. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Actor. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think that without remorse, that was coach words matter. When did he start acting is what you're asking? No, I'm trying to look at what the real break was. Um, okay. Wow, he did Gears of War, Bones, Cold Case, Without a Trace. He was on The Wire? Oh, he was one of the kids from The Wire. He was in Fantastic Four. He was on Cosby. Uh, 99. Wow. So he started at 99. He's in the Sopranos. Yeah. Is he yet? 99 is, yeah, he was a kid actor, man. You know, he was a young actor. Sopranos, All My Children. Friday Night Lights is a big show. Oh, Friday Night Lights was huge. He was on 26 episodes of that. So here's, here's my thing. Okay. This guy's corny. What? What? What is corny? What, let's let's define corny. Somebody that knew what he wanted to do, put the time and the effort and the sacrifice into to doing it. So we going back to 1999. He's been grinding this shit out to the point where he's literally doing, you know, Creed and doing may you know may I mean think the first Creed was uh 2015. So you know yeah the first Creed is 2015. So. I think that was his uh, well, Fruitvale station. But Creed was, I think, his first. He's 12. I mean, look, see, he, he worked his way up. He's got a lot of things here that are massive. You know, Soprano. He yeah. worked his way up as a child actor. But the point is this. Corny is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Right? Because here's a guy who was hustling. He's got discipline. He's, he's you know, he's, he's following his dreams. And a bunch of fucking bum losers from Newark, New Jersey. Yeah, and I'm familiar with that area because I grew up around that area. I, I'm in Jersey City. I know what it is. It's a nightmare over there. Yeah. It's the same shit over in Jersey City. Yeah, a bunch of bums who had no fucking dreams of their own, never right. thought they'd make it out, were making fun of a dude because he didn't fit the exact motif that they all dressed up as, that right. they all did. You know, right. and it and it happens all the time. You take that fucking same person. That person would have been an outcast in a like an all white, you know, the, any one of them would have been an outcast in an all white rich kid preparatory school. You know, that would be, quote unquote, corny to be, diff, you know, it's like whatever you're doing, it's just it, it's just a group mentality. Right. The problem is and that, it's, that it's, just a, it's a group mentality based on an insecure place. Like the reason why people cling together is because nobody wants to step out. Nobody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to go along so that you can all jack each other off, that you're all dope and you're all the same because you wear the same sneakers or you wear the same British walkers or whatever. And him being a kid who wanted something more is really what makes him corny. I absolutely was corny. Huh? I was, I could have been corny. The only thing that didn't make me corny was I didn't give a fuck about what nobody was saying. Mm. You know, I, I, well, that's I, rare. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, because I understand it's a difficult thing to, to, to get to, 
you know, where you just don't. But one of the reasons why I, I didn't care about people, what people thought, and, I, I'm, and I'm saying that, but I'm not saying that, um, was my father gave a fuck about what everybody thought. He lived his life. For everybody uh, else. By, he, 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 when I say never let anybody, never let a woman define you, because if you let her define you, it won't be long until you ain't shit. And what that means is you will, if you have to decide what your value is, and if somebody doesn't agree with you, then they're wrong and you move on. But you don't let them stop you from being who you are. And... You, you you can still listen to the critics because sometimes people criticize and they go and you go, I mean, you, you go, okay, that was, that's a fair enough critique, but that's why I say over and over again, show me the work. If you're criticizing me and the criticisms make sense, then I can make it adjusted. I can take that even from a, I can take that from somebody who's an enemy because they might be about be, be correct about the criticism. But if you're, if you're, if you're, so for me, it was, I was trying so hard not to be who my father was, which is what put me in this place. And I'm not going to let somebody just de decide what, or de to define me. And I didn't really understand that as a kid, but it was, it was so freedom and so much free. It was so freeing that when I did kind of find my own space, and I was so unrelenting about that. Everybody just got behind me. It was it was it, it, it took seconds for people to go, well, he well, he he doesn't seem scared. So we're going to listen to him. That shows you how easily uh, manipulated people are and how malleable they are yeah. and what their integrity is, which is very loosely based yeah. on what you said, which is not giving into the fear or uh, the fear of looking foolish if you don't if you don't fall in line or trying something and failing or trying to be different because they can't handle that but you know at the end of the day i don't know i have it's interesting because you feel like michael b jordan when he's holding on to this type of thing is he should let it go and move on why is he holding on to a grudge my thing is she said it fairly recently in the last couple of years and also maybe to teach her a lesson because why not every once in a while teach somebody a lesson about running your mouth about you know and the consequences of you know if you're going to say something back it up because she did not back it up she goes i was she said i was misquoted i must right. have been misquoted or something she was not misquoted she called him corny doubled down on it mm. said he was corny and to me it's sort of teaching somebody a lesson you know about like, does it hey, really because who's getting the back who's getting the backlash who's getting the backlash of it yeah. he's his life is he's not getting any backlash of it sure he is is he you feel like yeah. he's getting backlash? They're, everybody's going, that's what makes you corny. The fact that you allowed this woman's to, this woman to, to define you is what makes you corny. That's what they're saying. You have achieved this level of success that because she was on the she's on the red carpet interviewing him, right? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so, she's one of the media. She's press. so he's he's he is the star, right? Yeah, he's already listen. He's already won. It's not the point that he's is our you know. So he's, he's already teaching won. her a lesson. I mean, the, the 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 simple fact that she can say she's going. Oh, it, you know the the nature the nature of the social dynamic shows her who was right and who was wrong. Um, and I would imagine she would love to be in the place of Michael B. Jordan right now, but she's not. She's interviewing Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I From my end, it's sort of like if you're going to run your mouth and you're going to talk shit about somebody when they get when you see that person, you're going to be held accountable to some degree. And I like that to a degree because. You know, she's she was also chummy, chummy. Hey, it's Michael B. Jordan. He's like, bitch, you 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 insulted me. Why would I be friendly with you? That's not okay. That's bullshit. Here's what he could have done. He could have just not taken her interview. 
Mm, maybe, but what's? I mean, it's isn't that the same thing though? Almost no, to a degree. No, I mean, I I think ignoring her altogether and just going, uh, you don't get the interview. Um, you know, I'm not interested in getting or, or but the, the you know, so here she's. So her getting on the red carpet and actually having to be, look, people know prior, look, here's how crazy it was. Let's be honest. I didn't, somebody had to tell me that she was on the podcast. Yeah, I, I forgot. Remember. I don't, I don't remember either. So let's be honest. How, how dope is she that we didn't even remember that she was in my house and I was hitting on her. Mm. Right. Yeah, but that's us. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> but like, that's my. I but mean, that, I don't give a fuck. But that's because we're not corny, though. I I understand, and maybe he is corny. I don't know. The, the to me, the interesting thing about him is, I think he's a guy, and what happens is, especially in show business in this world, he's living the best life, but he's still, you know, I don't like saying it, but for lack of a better term, corny Michael B. Jordan, because of what I saw was with that relationship with Steve Harvey's daughter, whatever her name was, Boy. that that was an example of that. Now, it's just a guy who doesn't know his value yet, you know, and so he still is that, even though he's a big movie star, it doesn't change who you are if you haven't made those changes. You still have those same insecurities, so he still has the same sort of insecurities. And what what did. is the, what's the changes? Um. Well, having more confidence in who you are as a man. I, and, again, where does, and where does the confidence come from? Being successful with women, just knowing your value, and it's comes in the work. In the work, yeah, yeah. In the work, in the in the authenticity, in the truth, in the credibility, in the empathy, in you. You know the the fact that here's a guy who should you would think, you know, and this is the same thing again. Like you know, his creed is. He's Creed, but his Creed is, I'm going to get these bitches back for calling me corny. You know what I mean? Maybe. And it's like, I don't know. Dog, I, I'm telling you, the internet blew up because they were like, this is exactly what made you go. Like, uh, Joe Buttons was like, this is exactly why you, money doesn't wipe away corny. Confidence comes from, the, what you have to do is, and this is what's interesting, is every time I do a consultation, my and this is why all these manosphere dudes of have no solutions because they you, you're trying to tell people you're telling people you're giving them the statistics and high value men and this is it who has the value but they don't believe it and the reason why they don't believe it is because they, they haven't done real work in changing that yeah yeah well he's and successful as have, an actor but he hasn't done the work to change his perception of who he is because and even, yeah go ahead i'm sorry go ahead no I, i'm saying you know uh, listen I've, I've i've felt that same thing he doesn't know what his full value is as a man he knows it as an actor but the thing is we separate it so you know to be doing all the stuff he was doing for that she was all right you know that the daughter mm -hmm. steve harvey's daughter and then fawning all over her and the public displays and all this and then she just breaks his heart Right, because he doesn't know his full value. Because it's right, a separate so even thing. though he's as bad as he is, yeah. Uh, what is he? You know, he's still. She's going. You're corny. <laughs> she's going. You're corny, and I'm leaving you. I'm gonna get some. Now, look. Don't get me wrong. She's wrong. Uh, she's absolutely wrong. She's gonna re guarantee you that she fucking. Which one is it? Lori Harvey. Lori Harvey. Yeah. It's just cute, but it's like it's a thousand other joints, you know. It's a thousand chicks like her, like especially Michael B. Jordan. Did you see the thing with uh, uh, what you call it? That what you call it said? Um, Nicki Minaj said. What did Nicki Minaj say? <laughs> Nicki Minaj was in. Uh, she was presenting an award, and they asked her what was she. They asked her what was she wearing and she said Dior and she said I'm wearing this so Michael B. Jordan could peel it off from me later like and then winked at him and walked away while she was giving him an award so it's like Margot Robbie hit on him uh, yeah my uh just endless chicks who are hitting on him but here's here's the pro here's the biggest problem is when you 
you don't really understand what your value is. What do you what do you do? You're in a situation where it doesn't matter what you accomplish. You still feel useless within the confines of the relationship. Yeah. Well, it comes yeah. I mean, like, but this is what he's doing. He's allowing people. He's allowing women to define him. He's allowing women to define him to say, this is what you this is what this is what your worth is. Right. And the fact that he's broken up, that he was even broken up about uh, Lori Harvey, right, is what makes it makes her go. I made the right decision. Well, yeah. What the, the thing with with Michael B. Jordan, he seems to be a guy who is like that. And there's nothing wrong with being a nerdy little kid from Newark or whatever. But he, you know, I, in my head and I've been because I've been through this situation where you're like, you know, this is my girlfriend. I made a commitment. This is supposed to be love. This is supposed to be, you know, love is never having to say you're sorry. Love is uh, forever. Love is meant to be. Love is this. And you're, you, you gloss right past all the red flags of disrespectful behavior until it's way too late. Yeah. And then you don't even realize that, you know, this person is, is, is unappreciative. Love and, is love is also conditional. Yeah. And we you say love is unconditional. You unconditional. respect. That it is it's a big it's, lie. It's never unconditional. So you got to you got to know and so here's here's the situation where you will find him you will find him in a situation oh, in relationship after relationship after relationship where it will get hot and heavy because the hype of what he has established and who he's become is the most important thing and then what happens as soon as that wears off, then it's like, how much can I, how much is this motherfucker going to let me diss him? How much is he going to make me uh, 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 worship me even when I'm being an asshole? And and don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I think this is a horrible way to, um, this is a horrible way to look at life. I mean, the fact, but this is the, 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 the morality um, and this is the whole manosphere. The whole manosphere is going, these women are horrible. Look what they do. Mm. But women are a product of the stuff that we put up with. And a lot of times guys are willing, you know, you hear, you see this over and over again where women go, I get men, I get six figure men all the time. Yeah, to fuck you. But nobody's giving you a ring because you're a horrible human being. And this is not, you're not a horrible human being because of, and don't get me wrong, there's horrible, the guys who have, who have, are considered high value, a lot of times they're horrible. But we've created this, this situation where all of a sudden this, this Instagram situation where it's, it's a, it's a shot in the arm. You know, it's all a shot in the arm. It's new. I love him. He's got, he's rich. He's this, he's that. Oh, but he's corny because he can't keep my interest. If you want to keep your if you want to keep your woman's interest, you have to set boundaries and maintain those boundaries and be willing to walk away. If those boundaries are over, uh, if those boundaries are uh, taken, into, if they're crossed the minute, the, if you have boundaries and you're setting the boundaries in a relationship, when they are crossed, they are to be questioned why they're crossed. And if there's not an apology and a direct movement to go. I'm sorry, and I will change my behavior. You got to go mm. because staying is saying, I accept this behavior. Let's get out of here. Um, we're going to go over to the Patreon. What plug your stuff have? Well, first of all, join us over at patreon.com slash manschool202 where we're doing bonus content. We're going to talk about some other stuff there. Every week we do either listener mail or uh, you know just more technique stuff, and we're going to do that right now. Patreon.com slash manschool202. Uh, also, if you want relationship consultations, you could hit me up at advicefromharry at gmail.com. And for everything else, follow me on social media, at Harry Turjani, and my TikTok, my YouTube page. I'm posting some new stuff, some new stand-up clips, and, uh, you know, could appreciate the support. Uh, y'all can check me out. You know everything Dante Nero. Google me. It'll all come up. I've been doing this long enough that it will, and it's continue will. Um, y'all want consultations, you could uh, see right there, uh, consultations, DanteNeroGan.com. Click on consult. Follow me on Instagram over here <laughs> at the Dante Nero. Um, 
GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. I love y'all. Check us out on Patreon. Support us, man. That's how we keep doing it. Thank you.